Hi, I'm John, and I hope you're having a good day. I'm going to talk just a little bit about my switch from Windows to Linux. It's been a year, and it's been, a, well, a little over a year, just, just a little bit over a year. And I switched over to Linux Mint from Windows, and I have been enjoying my computing experience greatly. I love using Linux, and especially the new flavors of Linux, where it's very user-friendly, and it's a lot like Windows. It's, it's a great product. And if you haven't considered this, consider it. It's really a good move. I use it every day for all my business dealings. I don't use Windows at all. I don't use Mac at all. There's no reason to, uh, unless you have a special application that works in those environments and those platforms and you can't get away from it. I get that. But even in that case, you could dual boot and, and still make Linux a part of every day. And you could be more anonymous, more on your own, which is nice. You know, is there something that can go wrong uh, with the software? It's pretty rock solid. I have not had any problems in the past year. What I'll say about it is, is when I started out, I got a Raspberry Pi. And uh, I just started it up. I, I wasn't going to tinker with it, but I was going to use it just to see what it would do. Little tiny computer. And the operating system on there was Raspbian, which is a, a flavor of Linux. And it all worked really well. And I went, you know, I could do everything on this. And so I went, wait a minute. I can finally get away from Windows, which I wanted to do for years because I didn't like signing into Windows. I don't like signing into software. And I went, boy, I, I'll use a, a, a robust Linux distribution, uh, not Raspbian. <laughs> I wouldn't use that on my, my regular desktop. But I finally glommed on to Linux Mint because it was easy. And it was a lot like Windows, really not hard to implement at all. All I did was backed up my data, uh, any crucial data, and and then uh, installed Linux, Linux Mint in this case, and uh, just rein reinstalled all that data so I could access it again, and it was great. I have a complete Office suite, LibreOffice. I have Linux Mint as the operating system, all sorts of different applications. Almost anything that you could do on Windows, you can do on Linux, you know, except for certain special applications or things like that. I get that. But even in that case, you could dual boot. So it's been a wonderful thing. I imagine I've saved so much frustration, a lot of money. I've saved a lot of money and just a great feeling about the whole computing experience. My operating system no longer gets in the way. And I think that's it. It doesn't get in the way. It's not constantly bugging you for one thing or another. And third-party software is not trying constantly to get you to sign up with them and pay money or uh, big tech companies just looking over your shoulder. It's all part of the same thing. Now, there's plenty of videos out there of people that will tell you exactly how to install Linux. It's not difficult. But for a lot of people, especially if you're coming from Windows, there's a couple of operating systems, a couple of distribution distros. I'm not used to calling them whatever yet. Distributions or distros uh, that I think work for an absolute beginner. And one of them is Linux Mint. Another one is Pop OS. These are really good for a first-time Linux user. And for somebody like me, who's pretty computer savvy for sure, uh, it was definitely not a problem. It, but it's not difficult even if you are just uh, a person that doesn't know that much about uh, Linux or anything like that. It's not difficult. And the software is not difficult to acquire after you install the operating system. So you're not going to have any problems finding what you need to achieve whatever task you have. And if you're doing web-based stuff anyway, 
you know, it's a matter of a browser and things like that. You also get some other benefits about privacy. The operating system belongs to you. It's not something you license. It belongs to you. The software all belongs to you. And if you want to donate to these people doing these different projects, whether it might be GIMP, a graphics uh, manipulation tool, or Linux Mint, or Pop OS, whatever it is, if you want to contribute to them, you can, but it's not required. And I contribute, and I contribute because I want them to keep working on it. It's good. And they do so much with so little. I mean, these systems are great. They're robust. They have just about anything you would need. But yet somehow these projects are able to do it on a lot less money than these big companies that spend billions trying to get stuff together. Linux, of course, we have to thank Linus Torvalds for having that wide open from the beginning. And he, I think he had a vision to make uh, computing open again and, and for people, not for just big tech. So consider it. Uh, there's all sorts of instructional videos. It's not difficult. You don't really have to worry about the terminal, um, you know, typing in commands and things like that if you don't want to. You could do everything without that. Um, it's not a big deal. I do use it for certain things. And if there's certain pieces of software that you want to get, uh, you may have to do that once in a while, but it's really not difficult. Not at all. So consider going to Linux. And I say this because it's been so good for me that I just want other people to enjoy the freedom and the simplicity they get of an operating system that doesn't get in your way and doesn't require you to sign in and is tracking you. Once again, these days, privacy to my mind is king. We don't want to be in a world where big tech is just constantly hovering over you, that type of thing. And by the way, if you're on social media, regardless of what the social media platform is, but things like Facebook, Twitter, any of the social media platforms, get off of this stuff. There's some that are more private than others, uh, but certainly Facebook and Twitter aren't. And I think there's some question as to whether there's government collusion. At least they're looking at things like Facebook because they want to make associations. Uh, people with people. Do you really want that? You know, we deserve privacy, and it's a right that we have. We have a right to be uh, private citizens. We don't need to have uh, big government or big tech, uh, you know, being on top of us and saying, what are you doing here? Oh, you're going there? You're going here? It's ridiculous. Linux, the Linux operating system is one way you can take back control of your personal life and privacy. Uh, I'll talk more about what to do with your phone. Uh, I also went to something that was, you know, a de-googled phone. It has no, no Google or anything on it, and it doesn't have anything that can track me. Do I have anything to hide? No, not at all. But I don't think it's right that big tech can be looking over our shoulder all the time. It's just not right. And I think it's bothersome that they do that. And I, I've been feeling this way for years. And finally, when I got onto Linux, I realized that you could get off of it. You could get off this merry-go-round, this horrible downward spiral of uh, big tech tracking and surveillance. I also did it for my customers too. I didn't like the fact that through me, they could conceivably be tracked as well. Um, even though that didn't really happen, I really took steps even early on uh, to not do that. But it's more secure now than ever because of the steps I've taken 
to get all these big tech companies out of my life. So anyway, that's it. I hope you have a a fantastic day and we'll talk to you again. Bye-bye.